Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to Texas travel and Lone Star State experiences. My name is Shane McAuliffe. You know, we always consider ourselves extremely lucky to live in the Lone Star State. And when you drive into Dublin, that luck seems to kick up a notch. Now, over the years, we have featured several stops in the Irish capital of Texas, and this time, we followed the rainbow to a cave. A cave that happened to be filled with cheese. The cattle industry in the Lone Star State is big business. From the plains to the valley, we've seen all sorts of livestock in all sorts of settings. So when we pulled into the Valdheisen farm in Dublin, it's safe to say we found some of the happiest cows we've come across. This is incredible. They're like, we're so happy you're not a beef raiser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuart Veldheisen takes good care of his cattle because they provide him and his family with lots of cheese. How do you keep your cows acting like pets? We really disturb them very little. The only time we really mess with them is milking, which is twice a day. And so we really don't mess with them a lot. They're just curious as ever. It's like, what are you doing out here today? And so they just come up. Stewart's from a few states north. I say I got delivered out of Minnesota, brought to Texas. It's where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> His journey to the Lone Star State Hall started in the early 90s, when the former dairy farmer's father found a magazine article about making milk in the most beautiful place in the world. For you guys to move from Minnesota to Texas to do a dairy farm seems kind of crazy to me because up there is where you guys have all that stuff, I thought. It is. It is true. I think the, one of the reasons why we moved, weather was a huge factor. My dad actually read an article about a Texas dairy, and he showed me pictures, and there, there was cows on green grass in December. And that just, when you live in that world, you think, how can that be? A dairy where there's green grass in December. Their venture only lasted until 1996, when Stewart decided that making milk wasn't for him. But after working off the farm for a few years, he started to yearn for another adventure in agriculture. But this time, he wanted to be the big cheese, literally. Doing some research and found that raw milk cheeses looked like the up and coming thing. Ended up deciding to do it. With the help of his wife, Connie, and his daughters, Chelsea and Rachel, and- How you doing? No, don't doing? forget dear old dad. Veldheisen cheese got off the ground. But to make the artisanal cheese different from the rest, his daughter Chelsea had the bright idea of adding sheep to the mix. This is the only dairy in Texas that has sheep. Is cow sheep cheese something you see in other places? I'm sure there's a little bit around, more in Europe, where there's maybe some blends. There's maybe a little in the US, but nothing in Texas. So Stuart and four generations of his family got to milking and making all sorts of raw milk cheese. It's just a beautiful of you know flavors of the cow side and amazing flavors of the sheep side. One of the biggest differences with this cheese is the fact that it's raw milk, meaning it's not processed or pasteurized. In other words, you won't find any yellow cheese here. Raw cheese means that it never gets warmer than the temperature of the cow during the whole cheese making process. It'll only get up to 100 to 102, so it's raw milk cheese. We keep all this natural flora that's in our milk that gets passed on into the cheese. Well, does it make a difference in taste, texture, or? Both, oh. taste and texture. It's an amazing what a difference it is. So this will be run through the cheddar mill. The cheese is aged in rooms that would surely be on any rodent's bucket list. Any mice around here? There better not be. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need that. <laughs> With 20 varieties on hand, you'll find all kinds of queso. We make sheep gouda, and then we thought, well, Let's marry the two. And so now we have a blend, which is gorgeous. Now you're just making everything Gouda. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cheese joke. Hey everything Gouda. Sometimes my humor has more holes in it than Swiss cheese. So let's go cut the cheese. You know, when I was a kid, there wasn't, we never had this kind of quality yeah. of cheese, but yeah, we enjoy it. Connie gave us a crash course on this culinary delight. This one is our redneck cheddar, one of our most popular cheeses cool. that we sell. Okay, what um, they're making right now. That's what they're making today. Okay. Yes. Beer cheese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All about it. Oh, that is good. Very strong. Now we're probably the largest cheddar maker of an artisan style in Texas. How do you stay so skinny here? <laughs> I've been eating cheese all day. We're gonna go over here next to our sheep cheese. This is called Woolly Texas. Okay, so this is actual sheep cheese. This is all sheep. So it, it's gonna have a little bit different 
flavor to it because it's a different type of milk. It's definitely saltier, right? No, it's really not saltier. It's just how it hits your hits your palate. Really? <laughs> this cheese is way better than I thought it'd be. Like it's really good. <laughs> like I love cheese. Even though a lot of times people will say, "Oh, you mean goat cheese, right?" No, no, sheep. And they're like, "Oh, didn't know you could milk sheep." Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is amazing. Seriously. It all comes down to happy cows and sheep making the most of their milk. Green grass makes amazing cheese. What do you think? I love this place. <laughs> I really feel that I'm really living more than the American dream because I get to have all these people at home at a place where we work and live life. It's beautiful.